is a 2012 Hyundai Equus Ultimate, and it is quite simply the single best luxury sedan bargain on the market right now. This is not exaggeration, this is not sensationalism, and this is not clickbait. This car is just a ridiculous, insane deal. And today, I'm going to review it and show you what I mean. I've rented this Equus here in Northern Virginia using Turo, which is this service that lets you rent other people's cool and interesting and weird cars, like this one, instead of your typical normal boring rental cars. You can sign up for Turo if you click the link in the description below, and you will get $25 off your first Turo rental. So let's talk Equus. Now the Equus came out here in North America for the 2011 model year, and Hyundai wanted to come out with a full-size luxury sedan that would rival the Mercedes-Benz S-Class and the Lexus LS and the BMW 7 Series and include all of the features of those cars, but at a more affordable price for buyers who wanted all that stuff and a big luxury sedan, but they weren't hung up on having a luxury car brand name like Mercedes-Benz or BMW. Unfortunately, Hyundai quickly discovered the same thing Volkswagen had discovered a few years earlier when they launched the Phaeton, namely that generally speaking, those people don't exist. So the Equus came out with all of the features and all of the luxury, and nobody bought it. And since then, values have plummeted. Right now, it would be very easy to find this exact car, a 2012 Equus Ultimate, with about 70,000 miles, on AutoTrader for around $15,000. Think about that for a second. This is a seven-year-old full-size luxury sedan S-Class rival with a V8 and all the stuff for 50 grand. So you're thinking, okay, fine, I get that a used Equus is cheap, but I still don't want one because it's full of all these luxury features and gadgets that are just going to break and they'll be expensive. Well, fine. It just so happens that Hyundai has the best certified pre-owned program of any automaker with a 10-year warranty that starts from the original sale date. So if you go and buy a three or four or five-year-old Equus, a 2015 16 model, you will still have like six years of warranty remaining. And if you go on AutoTrader and search for certified pre-owned 2015-2016 Equus models, it's easy to find one for around $25,000. That's right, for twenty-five grand. that's cheaper than some versions of the new Toyota Corolla. You could have a full-size luxury sedan with a six-year warranty and all of the usual luxury sedan features and equipment. So just what are those features? Well, today I'm going to show you. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of the Equus and show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the Equus Ultimate, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of the best certified pre-owned luxury car bargains currently listed for sale on Autotrader, aside from this one. Now, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Equus under the hood, and this is a good place to illustrate that the Equus is no cheap imitator of a luxury sedan. Now, the 2012 Mercedes-Benz S550 had a big V8, and Hyundai could have tried to stick a turbo V6 under here and convince people it was just as good, but they didn't. They went with a big V8 to rival the S-Class. Now, the S550's V8 had 429 horsepower. The Equus V8, 429 horsepower. I suspect that is not a coincidence. Although the two cars differed significantly in torque, the S-Class had over 100 pound-feet of torque more than the Equus. Now, the problem with the Equus and the biggest difference between those two cars came when you went to service it. Not because this engine is known for reliability issues or because it's expensive to repair and maintain, 
but because when you took your Equus into the dealership, your big full-size ultra-luxury sedan, you were standing there in line behind someone who had bought a used Hyundai Accent who was complaining about the price of a hubcap, which is not really the experience you want to have in a luxury sedan. Now, Hyundai realized that this would be a problem, and so they offered Equus owners when their cars needed servicing, the dealership would come out with a loaner car and pick up your Equus. And then when the service was done, they would bring the Equus back and pick up the loaner car. Presumably they did this to spare Equus owners from ever having to set foot inside a Hyundai dealership. Now, next we move on to the best place to be in the Equus, and that would be the back seat. And that's especially true in this Equus, because while most Equus models have a traditional rear bench seat back here with three seats, this is the Equus Ultimate. And that means the middle seat is taken out and it is replaced by a giant center console with all sorts of stuff. And I'm going to go through that stuff now. I'm going to start with a little button back here labeled Box. And you can press it and turn it on. What exactly is that? Well, that turns on the refrigerator. Open up the center console back here and you will find that it is not a traditional center console, but instead it is a refrigerator designed to keep cool whatever you need on a warm day. And you can turn it on with that little button. Now, when you move up from the center console, you see two compartments where the seat back would be in the middle. The lower compartment, you open it up, and it's for storage. You can put stuff in it. The upper compartment, you open it up, and it's for storage. You can put more stuff in it. So the rear seat passengers in the Equus have access to a lot of storage space. Now, next up, back to the controls on this big center console back here. One thing I absolutely love is the stereo controls. You can see power, mute, volume. That doesn't just change like some rear stereo system that you put headphones, that changes the whole car. So if you're sitting back here and you don't like the music the driver and front passenger are listening to, you just turn it off. Or you can change the radio station or you can do any number of things because you can control all of the same stereo functions throughout the whole car that the front seat occupants can, which is pretty cool. Now, another interesting item back here on this center control panel, you can see there are climate controls back here showing auto, temperature, fan speed, but there's no like screen that displays what those things are. How do you know what temperature you've set it to? Well, that would be the Equus screen. You pull up on this hinged plastic panel behind the front center console, and when you get it into the up position, it says Equus, and then it shows your current rear climate control situation. And anytime you change the climate control, you can lift up that screen and see exactly what your climate control settings are. Now, it's worth noting that I believe that screen could also be configured to be like a rear seat entertainment system. And then one of those little storage panels on the middle seat back would become like a DVD slot where you could insert a DVD and then it would play on the screen. Now, other interesting items in the back seat of the Equus Ultimate it has power rear seats. You can see the controls in the door. And you might be confused by the fact that there's a button marked auto. I certainly was. But if you press that, what happens is when you open the door to get out of the Equus, the seat automatically pushes back, giving you a little bit more room to climb out. When you shut the door and start driving, the seat automatically goes back into the comfortable position you had it set in. Now, beyond all of that stuff, the Equus Ultimate also has most of the other full-size luxury luxury sedan rear seat party tricks. For example, the rear seats are heated back here. You can turn them on by pushing this button and they are also cooled. So you can push the button the other way and turn on the seat cooling feature. There's also a mirror that drops down from the ceiling so you can look at yourself. And when you do that, some lights gradually turn on so that you can look at yourself in slightly better lighting. And speaking of rear seat lighting in the Equus, you also have individual map lights on the ceiling and they are movable. You turn them on and then you can move them to the precise positioning you want so you can read while you're being chauffeured along in the back of your Equus Ultimate. But the real party piece back here comes on the passenger side rear seat because it has some interesting controls, one of which is a footrest. There is a power extendable footrest. You press these buttons in the center 
control panel, and then the footrest will extend or retract, giving you additional comfort. But the best button is this one here with a couple seats on it and the word front. Now, if you press that, the front seat will automatically go into its furthest forward position, and at the same time, the rear seat will automatically extend into its most comfortable position. So that way, the front seat is all the way forward, you have the most possible legroom back here, and you're sort of sitting down and relaxed in the back of your Equus Ultimate. All of which is pretty impressive, but especially impressive when you remember that this is a $15,000 used car. Now, speaking of that front passenger seat, one other very noteworthy item back here. On the back of the front passenger seat, you can see there's a little black panel, and printed on that it says, Sensor for Massage. So, what is that about? Well, go back to the center console with the refrigerator. If you open up just the lid part, you can see there is a little remote control in here, and that turns on the massage system. And it isn't just a massage system, it says on the bottom, VIP massage system, so you really know how cool you are. And you can see it has dozens of different controls. They work only on the passenger side in the back, so you can get a massage as you're driving down the street with your map light perfectly placed and with the front seat all the way forward, so you're in intense comfort. So, okay, there's a massage feature back here, but that still doesn't really answer the question of what is this little black panel that says sensor for massage? Well, apparently there's a little sensor there that looks at whether someone is actually sitting in this seat. And that way, if you have the massage going and then you get out of the car and walk away and you're gone and you forget to turn it off, the sensor will notice that and it will automatically turn off the massage so it doesn't wear out the massage system when you're not sitting here. Now, next we move on to the front of the Equus. And one other interesting item you'll notice when it comes to seat controls, over on the door you have your seat controls, and there's a little button on top of the seat bottom that extends forward the seat bottom. This is for tall people with long legs to get a little extra leg support. Now, in Mercedes and BMW vehicles, there is a separate piece on the seat that extends forward for this purpose, but Hyundai cheaped out, and if you press this button in the Equus, it actually extends forward the entire seat bottom, which does the job, but not quite as well as the German luxury cars. And I think this is a good point to mention. How exactly is it that Hyundai is able to provide all the same features and horsepower as a German full-size luxury sedan, but do it for like $30,000 less when it was new? And it's things like that. And when you get into the interior, you can see more of these things. The interior quality is just not as good as an S-Class, even as good as an S-Class from 2012. The materials are just not quite the same. There's more plastic. Things just don't quite look as nice. And that is how Hyundai gets away with it. They give you the same stuff, the same power, so on paper it looks just as good, but it's the little things that distinguish mercedes -Benz BMW Lexus from the Equus. Now, another great example of this comes with the shift lever. Now, by 2012, Mercedes-Benz had already been using a column shifter, which is designed to free up more space in the center console. But Hyundai went with their more tried and true regular shift lever that they use in other vehicles. Now, the problem with that is there is so much technology and features in this center console area that it pushes everything back. And that makes the center storage area Area very, very small for a full-size luxury sedan. Now, at Mercedes-Benz, they never would have allowed this for the S-Class. It just simply wouldn't have been acceptable to have a center console that small. But Hyundai is like, yeah, well, we'll just let it go and see if it flies, because they don't want to spend all the money developing a totally new gear lever and steering column where they can mount it. Again, it's little things like that that distinguish the S-Class from the Equus. For people who don't notice that stuff or care about it, this is a great bargain. But anyway, moving on to the rest of the quirks and features in the front of the Hyundai Equus, one of those features that I was just talking about in the center console, there's a little button, the top-down view of a car that looks like it has like angry eyes coming off it or something. As it turns out, that button is the front camera system. When you're in drive and going at low speeds, you can press that button, and then the infotainment screen will display the front camera, I guess so that you can figure out parking and make it a little bit easier, which is a good idea. And another important important item worth mentioning in the center of this interior, you have right in the middle an analog clock. I suppose someone told Hyundai during the development phase, 
all expensive luxury sedans have an analog clock. You can't get away with digital. And so they didn't, the mark of a true luxury sedan, apparently. And next up, moving on to the infotainment system. Obviously, this car is seven years old. This system is starting to get pretty old, but there are still a few amazing quirks in here, starting with the time to destination setting in the navigation system. Now, this feature allows you to adjust how fast you drive, and that in turn allows the navigation system to provide different estimates for when you will arrive at your navigation destination. And you can tell the car how fast you drive on three different types of streets. You have residential main streets and freeways and unbelievably you can change the speed you travel on these roads to some ridiculous numbers residential you could turn up to 60 <laughs> if you typically drive 60 on residential streets main streets you can turn it up to 80 and i love that freeways you can turn it up to 100 if you're always driving 100 on the freeway you turn that setting up and then the car will take that into account when calculating your navigation time of arrival which is hilarious another interesting item in the infotainment system you can set it to a avoid a certain area. Now, a lot of luxury car navigation systems have this feature if you don't want to take your luxury car into a bad part of town. But this one has an especially weird thing. Usually you go into a void area and you enter an address. In this one, you go into a void area and you can scroll down to something that says emergency. And if you click on that, you have three options, police, hospital, and dealership. So you can have it avoid emergency areas. And for some reason, the dealership is considered an emergency area. That one, that just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Now, next up, moving on to the gauge cluster, this being a little bit of an older car, it doesn't have like a new gauge cluster screen. It's actually all fairly normal in there, but it does have one thing I absolutely love. If you have the adaptive cruise control system on, a little diagram comes up that shows your car using adaptive cruise. And when it has to slow down or brake, the brake lights actually turn on in that diagram in real time. So when the brake lights turn on on the car when it's slowing down, they also turn on in that little diagram to show you you exactly when the car is braking when using adaptive cruise. I just love that. I think that's a really, really cool idea. They definitely didn't have to do it, but it's neat that they did. Now, one other interesting item worth noting in the interior, the owner's manual pouch is this. It is massive. One of the largest I have ever seen. Absolutely crazy how much stuff must be in this owner's manual. Now, I leafed through it and I found one especially noteworthy item. On page 4-26, it's talking about the window safety feature where if the windows roll up and it senses something in its path, it will automatically roll down for safety. And you can see the image they use there is a little teddy bear getting caught in the window. That poor little teddy bear. Fortunately, he is saved by this window safety feature. Good thinking, Hyundai. Now, next we move on to the outside of the Equus and on to the trunk. And before I get to that, you know, I mentioned I rented this car on Turo, so I borrowed it from a person and uh, he chose to stick a carbon fiber lip spoiler on the trunk of his Equus, which is uh, a decision. But anyway, moving on to the trunk itself. Now to open the trunk, you press and hold this button on the key fob and then it pops open automatically because this is a high-end luxury car. And once you get in here, you can see the trunk is quite large. It really is a full-size luxury sedan trunk like you would expect from a full-size luxury sedan. Now, one interesting item on the Equus, and you can see it right here, is the badging. All the Equus models came with this logo all over it, rear, front, everywhere. In fact, there is no Hyundai badge anywhere on this car. The wheel center caps, they all have this little Y-shaped like bird thing. I never really understood what this was or what this was supposed to be, but that's the logo they went with. Now, when Hyundai created the Genesis brand, they came up with a new logo. So this was only really used on this Equus and no one ever really figured out precisely why. But obviously they wanted to distinguish it from the regular Hyundais. And the only way you could even tell that it was an Equus is because on the trunk lid it says Equus. Other than that, it was just this thing all over the outside of the car. 
And finally, two other exterior items worth noting about the Equus. One, let's talk about the front turn signals, which are absolutely massive, these giant front LEDs. There is no question at all when an Equus is about to turn, these things could light up the world. I also want to talk about the general styling of this car. Frankly, I've always liked it. I've always thought that the original to North America Hyundai Equus was a really nice looking car. It was just bold enough to compete with the real full-size luxury sedans but just restrained enough not to look ridiculous. I really think they did a great job with the Equus's styling on their first try, which is not easy to do when you're entering such an important segment full of established rivals like the S-Class and the 7 Series. Now, of course, there was a first-generation Equus before this that wasn't sold in North America, and I have reviewed that Equus, and I will link it in the description below so you can see how far the Equus came for its second generation. And so those are the quirks and features of the 2012 Hyundai Equus Ultimate. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the Equus. Now, I've been driving this car around for a few days, and like I mentioned, it's got about 73,000 miles on it. Um, and this one has not been maintained particularly great. For example, the seatbelt chime is broken. You'll probably hear it come on. There's some other issues here and there. The parking sensors are broken. Nonetheless, it still is so smooth. Um, I recorded a lot of what you just saw with the car running, which I almost never do because it's almost always too loud. But this car's engine is so quiet and the, the acceleration and the driving experience is so smooth. Uh, I mentioned earlier there's some places where you can see where they cost cut against, thank you, yes. There's some places you can see where they cost cut against Mercedes-Benz, and there are. But the feeling of driving it is not far off, if off at all. It really feels very smooth, very buttery, luxurious, frankly surprisingly so. I actually hadn't driven one of these until this one. Um, and. It's really not so bad. Um, I've been considering a car to replace my Mercedes station wagon with. I mostly do long uh, highway trips to go film videos and this is up there on my list because it just, it's just very nice. It feels like a car you could kill miles in and, and yet you won't get killed on depreciation in. Now in terms of acceleration, sportiness, that sort of thing. This car, it's not really about that. But I would argue that the regular S550 from this era wasn't really either. You kind of had to step up to an S63 or something like that if you wanted real, any sort of performance. I mean, you accelerate and it does what it needs to do. It gets going, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't get going fast. And more importantly, you're talking about the transmission geared for smoothness, not acceleration. It takes a second to gear down. It doesn't really want to do that. It wants to kind of continue your existence sort of wafting down the road. And it does that masterfully. Um, I would never, ever, 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 ever guess that I was in a Hyundai if you like blindfolded me and put me in the back here. This does not feel like other Hyundais at all. You know, that's what you'd say about it. I think it's pretty much that. Uh, it just drives really nicely. It feels very luxurious. It's it's kind of what you'd expect from a nice high-end luxury car, certainly punching above its price point today. And I, again, I really think those certified pre-owned ones are the best deals. I mean, this is a great deal at 15 grand. It's ridiculous how much it has and it's not that old, but the really great deals, 25 grand for a CPO, 26, 27, like what? Uh, you can have years of warranty left. Now it's worth noting that warranty is the powertrain warranty and it doesn't cover, the bumper to bumper is only five years. So it wouldn't cover like a little seatbelt chime that broke. Um, but still, I mean, you're talking about a $26,000 full-size luxury sedan with a big V8. This is everything. This is just, it's just great. And if you're not obsessed with badge, um, and if you are obsessed with saving money, <laughs> How do you beat this thing? And so that's the 2012 Hyundai Equus Ultimate. This car is an amazing value for 15 grand. And frankly, I think certified pre-owned ones with a warranty are an even better value for like 25 grand. This car was a really good deal back when it first came out, but since then it has only become a better deal. And I highly recommend it to anyone looking to get the absolute most value possible for their money. And with that in mind, time to give the Equus a Doug score.
Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Equus is nice, but nice for a full-size luxury sedan. It's not Ferrari beautiful, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Acceleration is fine. It does 0-60 to 60 in 5.8 seconds, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Handling is mediocre. It's floaty and wafts, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Fun factor is low. It's sort of fun in that it's powerful and quirky and loaded with tech, but there's not much driving enjoyment to be had here, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Finally, cool factor is low. These never did get especially cool, and it gets a 3 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 18 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. It's well equipped for 7 years ago, but it's starting to show its age and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is fantastic and it gets an 8 out of 10. Quality is a mixed bag. Reliability is supposedly good, but the interior isn't as nice as you'd want considering the class that it's in and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is average for the class and it gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, value, and this is where this thing shines. It's truly a bargain and it gets a 10 out of 10 for a total daily score of 36 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug's score is 54 out of 100, which places it here against some used luxury sedan rivals. The Lexus LS 600 HL beats it out since the Lexus is more comfortable and higher quality, but the Equus is so desirable because it's just so cheap, and it really is an amazing bargain. full-size luxury sedan that would rival the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, the Lexus LS, and the BMW... How are you that loud? How do you exist in, in, that, in that level of noise? And why do you have to do it while you fly? Just fly silently. Geese.